All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Overshot, a paintball podcast. Just wanted to do our sponsors uh, for today's episode. Uh, been rocking with us um, from the day one, Dizana Sports, makers of the Grind Air Gloves, the SF Joggers. Uh, they do custom jerseys, custom hoodies. Uh, we got one of the hoodies up in the back. I know I always do this wrong. There we go. Right back there. <laughs> so whatever. Uh, we'll definitely get you lock- laced up with one of those. We're actually going to be doing... Um, some giveaways soon from side from for uh, from Dizana Sports. So use code Overshot for ten percent off. The next sponsor is Volcano USA. Uh, they got the new um the backpacks, the fire backpacks. They just came out with two new colorways. Uh, they got the uh, desert camo and then the gray and red. Uh, so you can sling those over your backs, especially on those rainy events, dragging your bag through the mud and stuff like that. Uh, I know four of the players just had a rainy event, so I saw some of the Misfit Toys dudes just bang. You put them in their back, walk right through the mud, drop them off on the table. They got plenty of compartments, everything you need. So definitely hit up Volcano USA below uh, for code Overshot 10 for 10% off. And then the new thing. Um, it's not a new thing in the world of podcasts, but definitely hit us up on our Patreon, um, Overshot a Paintball Podcast. And if you've been calling us, trying to get on the podcast, you know, one of the quickest ways is to support the podcast. You know, you support us, we support you. Um, there's a du- couple of different tiers there. You can, you know, get discounts on merchandise, discounts on Dizana Sports. Um, and we're working out with Volcano as well as a couple other companies that are going to come out. So definitely hit it, uh, us up at Patreon slash Overshot a Paintball Podcast. So definitely click the link below and help us out. But we got uh, Maddie K, Maddie Karpinski, um, basically uh, the newest um, paintball commentator on the market here. Uh, the guy sent me, I, you know, I've, I've seen him on and off. I've known about him. Um, probably I'll, I'll shout it out. You know, a lot of people want to help and stuff like that. But this guy sent me a legit resume. It wasn't no BS. He was like, yo, this is my accomplishments. This is what I could bring. I've done this before. So uh, Maddie Karpinski, you know, again, probably the second best Maddie in paintball <laughs> next to Maddie Marshall. Um, so uh, Maddie, just how we kind of kicked this off, uh, how you got involved in paintball and then just go from your lineage. Cause I know you've played on, you know, misfit toys, jesters, dynasty Two, Philly energy, <laughs> you know, and then now with uh top gun, Revo Supreme, Supreme Revo, what, however it goes, but yeah. um, play with some of my boys, you know, Baskin, uh, you know, and Chester yeah. and stuff like that. So just kind of let us know, man. Introduce yourself right. and we'll go down that rabbit hole. All right. Hey, guys. Maddie K here. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started paintball forever ago and it feels like I've played for every team in the region and know everyone in the region. So it's really awesome getting the, the gig to commentate and all the uh, local tournaments and be able to contribute and not just, uh, you know, just say player here or going here. I'm able to like call out people by their name. So it's definitely fun to do that. Um, getting back to the original story of how I got into paintball. Um, I was on vacation in the Poconos and there's a little target range, uh, you know, like a go-kart arcade target range kind of thing. And uh, I, you know, I was like, Oh yeah, we got to do that. So me and my dad, my brother were there just lighting things up. And uh, you know, some guy was there and he was saying hey you know we can go back out and play and my dad said no right away and then (laughs) uh went home and it had to be like a week or two later um one of the paintball tournaments was on espn and i think that's when like the light bulb went off in my head and like my dad seeing that this is just not like some crazy thing this is like a real real deal and then uh you know, got up to the Poconos and played you know once a year then you know twice a year and then really really got into it more and more and more and uh Got a part-time job because, you know, paintball is expensive. It's hard to afford it when you're starting out. And uh, I was just turning 16, just like got a hand-me-down car. And I was, I'm going to go work part-time in a field and get a little bit of money off and cheaper stuff. And that's how I got into it initially. So, <laughs> What field was that? That was uh, Cobra Command in Hatfield uh, at the time. Changed hands a few times and uh, now OX... Uh, Hatfield, or shout something. out to yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mike Crotsley and all those guys who's helped us out over the years too. And uh, yeah, that's where I started. So, how did you end up? Is that where you met Big E and then ended up getting involved with Misfit Toys? Was Misfit Toys your first team, or no? I wouldn't. Misfit Toys was not my first team. Uh, out of Cobra Command, there was like uh, it was basically Arsenal Camp there, and uh, 
you know, uh, they were playing a lot of seven man and stuff. I'm pretty sure there was, uh, all the Arsenal teams were there, including Arsenal kids, Ralphie, rest in peace, you know, all those guys. And, uh, you know, uh, I started playing with a lot of them and, you know, Pinky's another name you guys probably know. Mm -hmm. And him and I, him and I were on our first team together. Um, we played division three NPPL in Boston. That was our first event. And, uh, didn't do so great, but it was a, it was a great first (laughs) time. And, uh, you know, just coming out of that group, uh, the Arsenal guys. And uh, that's actually where I met Sean Henderson. Like, that's why I'm cool with him was from way back in 2004 and five back then. And, uh, you know, Dave Baines and other Arsenal players would be at the Cobra Command indoor field. So as I'm working, cleaning up, getting a little bit of extra paint, they're doing drills and I'm stepping onto the indoor field with them doing drills at night. And it was uh, an easy way to get a taste of the top. Absolutely, man. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you mentioned Sean because Sean was on ours. I don't know if you saw the one where he crashed our podcast or whatever. Um, no, no, so, no, oh, man. We had, you know, we're not go too off track, but you know, we had a TSXL recap with a couple of the different teams and whatever. So the one guy, you know, James or whatever, and you know, James even you you met you you know who James is because James was yeah. on the commentator, right? He he. uh James is beautiful. I'm coming for you, Maddie boy, that kid or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's having a party while he's doing this. And Henderson basically jumps in and is like choke slamming him. <laughs> and Henderson's like Wakanda forever, Wu Tang, Wu Tang. And I know Sean a while too, man. So like, you know, you know how Sean is. Whatever. Oh, yeah. But yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Sean, Sean's a great guy. You know, he was on Bad Company. He he did that back in the day too. So Sean, Sean's been around. Around the, around the area for a while, but, you know, kind of kicking it back to what you were saying, you know, Cobra Command, Arsenal. Arsenal had a big camp, and all their teams were doing good, especially on, yeah. you know, the MPPL circuit. Um, Arsenal, like you said, Arsenal Predators was doing well. Uh, yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal kids, kids, like, Arsenal. With, like with Ralphie and uh, uh, Matty Watts, one of my really good friends that I didn't really, like, know at the time, but I look back through pac- uh, pictures that my dad took, at, like, at the first event, and me and one of my best friends are standing next to each other, and I you know, it's really funny to look back on. <laughs> Absolutely. So what ended up, you know, progressing after that first Boston event? Did you end up playing more MPPLs or did you get into the PSP circuit? Um, Because I've known you, you've you've played on and off of both or both at the same time. Yeah. So uh, at that time, um, I was just graduating high school and uh, I guess I was on autopilot. Didn't really know what I wanted to do, you know, and uh, went away to college for a little bit. So there was some downtime there. Um, about that time I had, uh, joined up with Misfit Toys, uh, became friends with, uh, my friend Ryan Ort out in Lancaster and we were able to play a little bit then, but it, paintball really didn't kick off with me until about 2008 with Misfit Toys because I came back home and, uh, was at school spending a ton of money, didn't really know what I wanted to do and was going to do the community college thing, which worked out in the end. And, uh, mm-hmm. Misfit Toys uh, was my team for a while, and uh, I was just telling this story to someone actually earlier today, and uh, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but the group on Misfit Toys that I met and became friends with was a big group of the same semi-pro Dynasty 2 team that we had. So it's really been like the same group of friends that we came up with and uh, became friends with one of my great friends, A-Ray and Kirk Iyer and these guys, uh, and uh, we're all groomed by Big E coming up and uh, did really well. Um, I eventually then uh, played with Mr. Toys for a while, and I feel um, I had hit like the top of the game with that. We had played a Division Two event in Phoenix, did really well, and it just felt like everyone had kind of gone different directions. Everyone had hit college, and uh, I joined Underdogs with my friend uh, Roger Roper and those guys, and did really well in D3. And shortly after that, my friends uh, from Mr. Toys at the time, like Alex Ray, Christian Reinholtz, um, had been playing with the Jesters, and then I had come over to play with them in Division Two. Um, only uh, was with Jesters for a little bit, uh, but I met so many good friends there on Jesters. It was uh, including like Guy, uh, the Hussein brothers, uh, and Jesters were about like pro at that point. Uh, so like Matt Saucman, Meter, mm-hmm. Dave Weinrub, all those guys I became friends with in that camp. So it was really interesting that you know local Jersey team actually made a lot of big friends and uh, Timmy. Yeah, they uh, pulled you know, in players, right? Like oh, they, I yeah. felt like they had a lot of different play, like you said, like Meter and stuff like that. Because I remember, yeah. you know, just kind of doing my homework right before this is kind of when I knew the Jesters is when um, 
And I saw there's if there's even photos of you, and like I wouldn't even know. Um, <laughs> Long Island <laughs> opened this field obnoxious all the way right. out in Calverton or whatever. It ended up getting bought by Cousins, but when it first opened, it was like the gestures were coming 40, 45 deep, and then yeah. there, there'd be a ton of people there. And when it first opened, there wasn't a lot of it was, it was like a seven man layout with like the U, and there wasn't a lot of bunkers, but I remember. I just because I was looking through your photos just to kind of you know jog my memory on some stuff. So I mean, you were with the Jesters. I mean, a guy that we ended up you know ended up playing with us on Master Blessers later on. Uh, you know, there was Sully, and then and then oh, Vegas yeah. was even on the team a bit. Goldberg, <laughs> Goldberg. Guys, yeah. mm-hmm. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I parted with those guys. Uh, those guys, uh, I think, were a couple years older than me. And Chaz too. Shout out to him. Uh, I remember partying with those guys in New York and I had to be like 21 at the time. And I was like, wait, bars in New York are open till four. And like, it was just a wild time <laughs> <laughs> expanding my horizons. So shout out to those guys. They're a lot of fun. Um, Absolutely, but, man. So you are, you, so take us on, you know, now you're on the jesters and then, yeah, and then so, you know, obviously you met the Husseins and a bunch of all these other characters that we all know. If you're not yeah. from the Northeast, maybe you don't know him, but maybe you do, but you know. Yeah. And including it was like uh Alex Ray, me, Christian, Guy, uh Sane Brothers, and we were like tearing up D2, doing pretty well. Um and I had spent a good time with that, and I guess we were doing really well as a team and proved ourselves. And uh this is a fun story I like to tell. Um I got a call from my friend Kurt at the time, who had just started playing with basically Andy Shoemaker and the newbies um, that and Ian trainer that were going to be becoming dynasty two. And they had already done their first year in seven man. And I was playing PSP at the time. And I got a call from Kurt and backtracking. Kurt is someone I met on misfit toys. So full circle again. And uh, <laughs> he calls me and says, Hey man, uh, MPPL rules are changing. We're going to a like clock it, you know, MPPL changed the scoring rules where it didn't matter on bodies. It's just how many times you scored the points. That's when I got a phone call to say, hey, we need some X-ball speed to come down here and uh, just just change it up a little bit and add some depth. And uh, I was really heartbroken because this is, this is the dream of paintball. But I don't know right. these guys, and I'm going to be leaving all my friends. And, uh, you know, upset about it, I have to go break it to my friends, and we're all going to hang out on a Friday. So I, I sit down, and I tell my friend Alex, and I'm like, hey, man, uh, I don't know how to say this. So I'm just going to say it. I got a call from Kurt and I'm going to go play for dynasty two. I'm really sorry. And I remember him like having the strangest look on his face. He's like, dude, Kurt called me too. And I'm like, wait, did we both get the call? And he's like, yeah. So we're like celebrating. And then um, the moment hits us that Christian, our good buddy, isn't going to come with us. We're like, Oh my God. A Ray knows him from college at Penn state. They played really well on Penn state paintball together with Tyler Neely and a few people. And Christian is an alien. If you don't know him already, um, he just comes in through the door, closes the door right away, and says, guys, I just have to say it right now. I got a call from Kurt. And we all just basically like jumped around the house like little kids, like, let's go. And it was it was a lot of fun. And uh uh Andy and all those guys uh you know on Dynasty Two uh really uh I know like took me under their wing too, because I uh didn't have the high level of seven man experience that they did. Um I just really had only played middle level seven man, um, but had done some good work and uh PSP. So, um, mm-hmm. big learning experience. And, uh, uh, Kurt's dad, uh, had eventually, uh, came in and helped contribute and coach us that year. Uh, Rick Geyer. And, uh, that's, uh, jumping ahead again. I'm sorry. Uh, that's how, uh, Rico's <laughs> Raiders <man>. started. <laughs> so, uh, so big Rick that was coaching all the dynasty two guys and what became Philly energy. Uh, that's where Rico's Raiders came from is because, uh, it was big Rick. And it was like our chant and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so 2012 Dynasty 2, I mean, that was probably the best uh, year of paintball. I didn't know I was living it. And it was uh, so long mm-hmm. ago. Uh, a lot of friends. And that's really what it is. Became best friends with all those guys. And some crazy stories, you know, Vegas to Huntington Beach. So I know a lot of people didn't get to play Huntington Beach. And uh, it was a heck of an event. Like, there's there was nothing like it. it I remember going there and it's just California is awesome. And. It was so much fun, and I believe uh, we ended up finishing third or fourth uh, for the series, I think. Um, but either way, we had basically earned our shot up to pro, um, and that's kind of when MPPL was dying, unfortunately. So as we were moving up, right. earning our slot, uh, MPPL was on its way out in its last year, and uh, 
some of the big pro teams, X Factor, Dynasty and stuff, were just doing some of the events and they were like the top three or four teams. But uh, the depth of the MPPL had gone away when PSB basically said, you have to play in our league. Um, right. But, you know, some really good games there. Um, Philly Energy uh, was run by uh, Jeff Trainer and Ian Trainer, and obviously Andy still from Dynasty 2 from the coaching and Andy's on the newbies now. Um, and Philly Energy was another fun partying time. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff had these box seats at the casino, and uh, it was really awesome there seeing all go. these concerts and becoming friends with all these guys even more. And uh, and then it kind of just fell apart, unfortunately. I think the money stopped. Um, you know, I got to give a shout out again to Mike Crotsley uh, from Lehigh Valley Paintball, who really uh, put in the time and effort to the su- success of that team. Um, and unfortunately, you know. Ian kind of went to college. Uh, Jeff wasn't exactly involved, and then it just kind of fizzled out and uh, ended up going our own ways, uh, unfortunately, after that. Yeah, it's really easy to start a team. It's super hard to keep it going. Yeah, and, you know, real life happens. Like, none of us are getting paid. Like, no one's making real money salaries. Like, if you got to go to college, like, go to college. Like, you don't don't pick paintball over this. Like, you know, (laughs) unless you have a guaranteed check, like, don't. Don't do it. Like focus on real life. Paintball will always be here. That's what I tell people. And uh, I have to tell myself sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And then shortly after that, uh, I'm trying to think of the order, how this happened. Uh, there was some uh, Gucci gang guys that we were playing with, met a whole bunch of them, became friends with and uh, Philly, uh, Philly extreme out of OXCC. Um, we had some tryouts. We did some stuff. We put together a really solid D2 team, ended up taking fourth in the series um, in Division Two. Really upsetting World Cup, if you have uh, seen yeah, didn't, that video. Didn't you guys have a video about Cup or something? Like, didn't, yeah. Didn't you have was, a, a, like a big money guy back out or like – I'm not, I'm not <laughs> oh going to say God, a name. I, like, I, I think I a guy who promised that. you guys tickets. Yeah. Like, like, oh, he, was, he like showed you like fake <laughs> tickets that you like – you're going to Orlando, and then you guys realize like you had no plane flights and yeah, something like was, that. Yeah. So basically, um, we had this kind of investor guy show up in some old school paintball stuff, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be, you know, sponsoring you guys, throwing some money in, put my logo on it. I just want to get back into it." And you know, when you hear that in paintball, you immediately think like, "Wait, hold on," but how I had done it years before was exactly like that. It's like Ian's into paintball, Jeff and Mike Crotsley are really going to be helping the team. And unfortunately the success to paintball is, is money and uh, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily money, but it's like, if you can get a skid to shoot, like that's, that's the key. It to puts you way ahead of the game, dude. Way yeah, ahead I, of the game. It, looking at the Texas teams now, rumors I've heard about, uh, PB fit and all those guys just shooting skids for very low costs. I think the GI hub is down there. So, you know, you could look at a semi-pro team up here in the Northeast and versus the cost of a Division Three team down there, and it's just like, well, wait, how, what? And it, Paintball fits, it's just unfortunate. Paintball fits playing like a pro team, dude. They're training like a yeah. pro team. Yeah. They, it, dude, it's Wednesday, Thursday, drills. It's like, you know what I mean? Or, like this cup layout, they're going to play it Wednesday, Thursday, probably, and then Saturday, Sunday, they'll be all Friday, and then they'll do that yeah. next week too. I would I would love to do that. I mean, like, if, if I could – survive financially and do that but it also comes down to like i have to be at work <laughs> yeah. one but two i mean cost i mean we uh ever since the dynasty two uh philly energy deal that we had the deals were have been good um but it was never that sweet and i never realized it at the time of course you know and uh uh yeah i forget where i was what was i jumping into oh the philly extreme, philly extreme. uh scamming uh so uh you know we we put out some stuff where you know we were really trying to promote the social media trying to do the whole thing and uh the guy was basically trying to get some bucks out of us somehow and he didn't really get any money out of us we didn't we didn't lose anything besides our reputation and looking stupid but uh you know he said that we're gonna have like a bus down at world cup he was gonna be paying for flights and all these things but we had smelled something in the water way before this and uh pat uh on my team one of my best friends and he uh him and maddie watts had kind of been talking to us like well let's just see how this goes like no one we're not going to put all our chips in the basket and eventually it just got out of hand to where you know there was some pretty nasty voicemails and 
kind of funny voicemails left uh, returned, but we, we didn't have any loss besides looking silly, uh, thankfully. I hope that's that's what I understand. And uh, at World Cup, we were so hot. We were untouchable. We were the we, we couldn't be beat. And uh, not trying to say anything against the image guys. They're a good team. But uh, we beat them in prelims. Very uh, – I Montreal image, you're saying? Yeah, Montreal image. It was Division Two World Cup, and uh, we beat them up pretty good. I felt um, we had been going point for point for them like forever, and like uh, Brian at the time was, you know, uh, Brian Barna was supporting us a lot, and you know, we were his boys. And when you know, Image and his guys were there, you know, it was kind of like a yeah. a good little war between that. So it was really nice showing it off. And when we beat them at Cup, it was like, hey guys, we're, we're looking good. We got a buy. We're ready to go, and. Uh, you know, there was some issues that happened and uh, basically the division two fields refs were removed um, and mm. changed with some of the 10 man fields refs, uh, some very questionable calls. And, and th- this isn't like anything that I'm saying, but um, they had changed up their game plan a hundred percent to where they were shooting different shots at us. And I know some of the impact guys or Dave Bain, some, some, some big name I can't really recall was definitely drawing it up different for them and, and slowing us down. Uh, and there was a lot of bad calls. And what happened was, is uh, at the time PSP's buzzer, or I'm sorry. Yeah. PSP and XL it had to be PSP. I forget. Anyways, the <laughs> buzzers I think uh, were off and it was a race to the buzzer to see who was going to win. And I was off the field and I remember looking like our guy clearly won and he didn't, there was no record in the scoreboard. And back then I think it was kind of like a, you know, the hands up like point ending thing. And Mm -hmm. the buzzer like didn't go off for either team. And it was like, okay, what happened? Then the time ran out they're saying, no, you hit it first. You hit it first. And, uh, we were so mad. We're like, well, test the buzzers, test them because we don't believe you. And we were basically told that we lost. Um, and they did beat us. They did beat us, but, uh, we were so mad because we felt like we weren't given the right justice on the field. And I'm not going to say like a bad call happens, like penalties happen on the field. And that's, you know, I, there were some questionable penalties on the field, um, due to these other refs coming in. And I, don't want to get too much into that because that's just drama and hearsay. But uh, basically, you know, we were just told that we lost and uh, we were mad. I mean, I we think were... not to jump in. I think a yeah, certain a certain paintball company's child plays on the team that's playing also. And this isn't the first time I've heard anything with Montreal image. So, um, um, yeah, there was uh, when when the referee's boss showed up and watched that game and was yelling to call us out. Um, and I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not trying to be that guy and talk anything. No, I'm just doing it from memory. And it's just, Hey, it's in the past. If anyone's hearing this and trying to get mad at me, but it, mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of like the dad yelling on from the sidelines, but he wasn't yelling at his son. He was yelling at his employees, uh, about the referee. So, I mean, like, Hey, if you're yelling at a ref, like, Hey, the inside of his loader. Okay. But it's just like, get him out, get him out, get him out. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. And it's like, that wasn't a penalty. He wasn't shot. You just are pulling people. And um, I'll leave it at that. We had we had lost too early. And uh, shout out to Solus. Uh, that's really when he was coming up, taking some videos. And mm-hmm. uh, got a very emotional video of us just being so upset of, like, we felt like we were going to win World Cup. And it was just taken away. And I think we all learned that today. <laughs> wow, how yeah. paintball works. And uh you know, it, it was just really unfortunate, and I think we got a bad little taste in our mouth. Uh, shortly after that, uh, we tried to go into the next season, and somehow I was ranked D1, Kurt was ranked D1, and uh, my friend TJ Evans was ranked D1, rest in peace, and he, uh, I ended up not going to Vegas. And uh, basically, they went out there, I forget how they did, actually, but uh, it just didn't come together for us as a team after that, and it felt like not too long after that TJ passed away. Um, and then I started looking into some Gucci gang and getting in with the newbies as they're coming into division two. Division two was really good uh, with the newbies. They did really well. Um, I was able to participate as much as I could. Uh, there were some events where Andy and the, 
Ryan, I think, couldn't attend, and I was able to bring in some of my extreme friends like uh, Black Pat and Tyler Neelig and uh, really helped Dom and uh, Chase and those guys grow. Uh, after newbies... Where did I? <laughs> you may know me better than me, John. Ten man, dude. I think he played yeah. some ten man against us at OXCC. I, I remember Rico's yeah. Raiders playing that. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll say that. I remember you guys yeah. playing some ten man at OXCC, chomping yeah, us up so, a bit. You- yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, that's like getting back to having some fun in paintball. And you know, we. It's hard to have fun when you take it so seriously. I mean, we've played at like the top premier levels, and you have to start saying goodbye to friends and you know, taking the best players. And I think shortly after that, we started to realize, like, we just want to have fun. You know, there's there's no glory w- without having fun. So 10-man, um, we put together Rico's Raiders, uh, a whole bunch of people uh, coming out of the woodwork for us on that. Uh, and uh, some of that being Steve O'Neill, <laughs> uh, old school guy. And uh, it, it was just a lot of fun playing 10-man. And we've been having success even at the NXL 10-mans. And uh just slowing it down, using some seven man skills, and it's it's a lot of fun doing that. Uh, getting into woods or wherever it is. No, that's awesome, man. I mean, so is that is that something that I mean, obviously you, you've played or something. Was that I mean, did you kind of spearhead that, or is that something where you know you got the call and it's like, yo, the boys are back. I don't care what <laughs> it is, I'm going. I'm playing with the boys. Um, I mean, what did you, what did you think? Because you know, Travis plays a lot of the mechanical. I played, you know, the mechanical. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think of this mechanical resurgence and everything like that? It's the best thing that's happened to paintball because I am able to play with all my friends and I have lots of friends in paintball. And sometimes if you're going to say, Hey, I want to go out here and play up to my rank division two or semi pro, whatever it is. And not all your friends can play there. And if you can just come down and play these open mechanical things, we're just sliding around having fun. And, Obviously, win or lose, you're having fun, but more fun when you win. <laughs> but right. it's uh, it's just really awesome to do that. And, you know, I didn't really get a call. Like, the Philly Extreme group um, is, like, with my core group of friends. You know, uh, we've had that group chat always lit up every day um, ever since 2015. Um, so it's really nice to just see that that group of friends stick together, and those are, those are some of my best friends. Um, Every little tournament that comes up, you know, the stuff that you've been putting on, we've, we've been communicating to them and real life and COVID and stuff, it's hard, but uh, they all want to still play. And when, when there's an opportunity to just be like, oh, I don't need to do tons of practices and get back in shape, 10 man mechanical, I'm there. So <laughs> it, it's kind of like the, uh, I know these guys can ball and they just want to come out and have some fun. Um, but yeah, that, it's, so, it's so much fun. I, I would say if you haven't done any 10 man events or mechanical events, just do it because, you know, when you're practicing for your five man, really competitive, hyper competitive stuff, it's super fast. And I think you can learn something from slowing it down in 10 man and really communicating back and forth across the field and, you know, chess piece for chess piece kind of paintball. No, for sure. I like it. Cause, um, I think it gets you more prepared to play those super important points. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. and mechanical, like, yeah, it's a little bit slower, but every game is like very valuable. So yeah. I think it helped, like for me, it like helped prepare me for those games where it's like, hey, it's one one. You know what? This next point is fucking super important. We cannot lose the next point. That, so I think mechanical definitely like helps bring the importance per game back for sure. For sure, a hundred percent agree. And there's something about five people on the field that um, is great, but it's also kind of hard to learn from. So. Like, you know, if you're a key player in your breakout game plan, whatever gets killed off the break, you know, you often have to fill in like what feels like a suicide fill. And in 10 man, you know, it's more of a, okay, yeah, I can fill over here and not only survive a little bit easier, but you're processing what I need to do, where I need to look and communicate and adjust the guns. Uh, In five man, it's like, I just need a body wide and you just run to the corner. So it's a little, um, a little bit slower and way more methodical. And I think it, definitely shows that higher IQ or at least teaches the, what you can apply to five man. And it, I find it almost harder to learn from five man. It's just so fast. Um, so if you play 10 man with your five man team, that's 10 people, you're going to be learning so much more and having so much more fun. Uh, and the little stuff that you're trying to force on the field, like communication, uh, you're going to, you're going to get it out there. 
no, for sure. So what's what's I know we brought you up to the newbies. You were on the newbies uh for a while then, and then eventually you ended yeah. up uh getting the call for uh Top Gun Revo Supreme and everything like that. Yeah. But I mean that was still I was probably like you said, it's your boys again. It's it's the same thing. It's just regardless of what team you're going to, it's one of your boys in this Philly energy extreme camp giving you the buzz and everything like that. Because it yeah. seems like again, you, you kind of play with the same guys. Yeah, a couple guys come in here and there. You know what I mean? You get introduced to this guy and this introduced to this guy. But I mean, you've been playing, like you said, like Matty Watts, uh, you know, Black Pat and all those guys. Yeah. You know, those are names that you've been saying a lot. So um, what ended up happening with the newbies that you wanted to transfer into playing? Because it didn't seem like it seemed like you you were on the newbies just because like the extreme thing wasn't a thing anymore and you and you wanted to yeah. play, right? Yeah, that's kind of what happened. I mean, uh, I'm cool with Andy and all those guys. You know, I, I reached out and said, I want to I want to play. Like, I can contribute, you know. And I play with them on Dynasty 2, Philly Energy. They know I'm a good player. Um, I think some of the other people on that team were not a fan of me. And it limited my playtime. And uh, him and I have butt heads over the years. And uh, Brian Rodriguez, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I, I know he doesn't think I'm the best player in the world. And uh, that's okay. Uh you know, him and I have still had lots of fun together and uh, I've been able to squeeze a water bottle in his face when he's drinking from it. So, uh, you know, it's just a little stuff that I, I can uh, I can still say he's my friend, but I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of him. And uh, with newbies, I stopped having fun. Um, it was I wasn't having fun. Therefore, I wasn't playing as well. I didn't want to be at practice. Not didn't want to be at practice. It was like it's just a different feeling when you're having fun. And those guys are my friends, but they're not like my boys. You know what I mean? And right. Uh, Andy and all those guys are great. Spees, uh, Weenus, uh, Spencer, everyone. I'm forgetting people, but uh, yeah, you know, it was welcomed onto that team. Uh, Tyler, their snake player, is great. His dad, everybody, and uh, dude, I've known that yeah. kid since he was yeah. <laughs> twelve. Dude, seriously, when he when they came to ref my first event, Tyler came up to me. He's like, "Yo, dude, do you remember me?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, dude!" I'm like, right? "How old are you now?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm 21." I, I'm like. Holy jeez, dude. I remember when you were 12. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you. He's like, Andy, this guy coached me at my first speedball tournament ever. And I was That's like, crazy. holy jeez, dude. At long live. Like, and now, you know, I'm, I'm an employee. He's an employee of mine. But yeah, man, Tyler. <laughs> and his dad was there. Dad, his dad came out and watched. Yeah. And, his, and his, Tyler's like, dad, you know, I'm just like working. Like, I'm not playing. He's like, no, I want to watch it. So I see his dad. I haven't seen his dad because he, him, and his dad used to play. They used to play woods ball, like upstate mm -hmm. New York. Like we would go and play him as master blasters, and you know they would have like feathers in their hats and stuff in their <laughs> in their mask. Tyler never did it, but you know I don't want to. The other kids, <laughs> the other kids on the team. So I mean, yeah, man. Shout out to Tyler, the kid, the kid yeah. could play. And then when I watched when I watched that newbies documentary after they they whatever they won or whatever, and. I mean, him and the other kid got away with something real good, very good, uh, very good. Not calling him out, but he got away with it, and they won World <laughs> Cup. And you know, I I congratulate them. You know, shout out to Hunter, shout out Tyler Hunter, shout out to his dad. His dad just loves yeah. the game, man. You know what I mean? His dad sits there and was watching the whole TSXL, and he's like, "This is awesome. I think I'm coming back next time." And I'm like. I pre I, I, I'm like yeah. I appreciate. It. I'm like I'm gonna get you a shirt, man. You can wear that around. Yeah. I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get him in the booth if he comes. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. Get him in the booth, man. I'm telling yeah. you, man. He's he he just loves that. He loves the game, man. So, you know, shout yeah. out, shout out to Tyler, and shout out to his dad for sure. Yeah, and you know what? Even uh, I, I played with them for not a super long time, but I've known them for a while, and uh, you know, running into them at events and seeing Tyler's dad and just coming up to him and giving him a nudge. And he looks at me, he's like, yo, Maddie. And it's like really <laughs> funny. So it, it's just good to see people. And there's uh, you know, as much as uh, I hate the newbies, I, 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 I want them to win. They're my friends. So uh, I, I often, uh, we played them at cup and they knocked us out this past uh, cup. And I was, I was so mad because it's like, guys, we cannot lose this game. We cannot lose this game. We need to beat them. And, you know, Damien did really well for them. And uh, I, I think I remember shaking their hands being like, love you, hate you. Like, you know, they're, they're... 100%, dude. You don't want to lose to your boys because then they could just talk all that smack. Oh, yeah. Time they see yeah. you. You know oh, what I mean? Course. You always want to beat your boys. Yeah, you can't lose to them. And, and it's just like the same stuff. And, you know, shaking hands with Andy and like, you know, 
they're just such nerds. I love them, but it's <laughs> it's just so horrible <laughs> to lose to them again. And uh, they're really good ballers. I mean, they did so well. They're they're moving up, and uh, you know, congrats to their overall success. Uh, but yeah, it eats your soul when you lose to them. And uh, you know, I, I obviously wish them the best, and they've been doing really really well. Um, after that, newbies, uh, I like kind of moved on to the Supreme group and, uh, became cool with like Chester and, uh, Travis and Red and those guys. Um, and basically I'd seen this flyer that they were putting out out of Top Gun, a semi-pro team. And I said, you know, immediately talking to Pat, I was like, Pat, what's this? And he's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't worry about it. <laughs> he's like, he's already scheming, you know? And uh-huh. it's basically, you know, uh, me, Pat and Ryan Ort we're looking to come in to add some, a little bit of experience to uh, these guys who haven't played up before and well, not before, but like, you know, uh, be pro and a couple of, yeah, these guys had, you know, we had just been a good combination to where like, if you bring us on in as a group, play us on the same line and use us as, as different combinations, it'll just add depth to the team. That's what they wanted to do. And uh, we struggled at first as a team, uh, had a couple penalty issues we had a couple like one-on-one wa- losses and you know it was a lot of games i like to say you know don't look at the scoreboard because you know we're a team where it's like we're down by one we're going at them mm-hmm. and it's like okay you lost by two it's like well no like it was really like one you know one. and and uh you know margin and stuff at that point didn't matter you're just going home or not you know going right you have to go two and two and uh you know we get one and three and uh didn't play Chicago with them, but ended up playing with Chris Shear at World Cup. Um, really had the team finally come together, have success, get seventh, and the team got gutted um, by basically Revo. And I'm not trying to say this in a negative way, but uh, we lost three core starter players, and we went into Vegas this year with a skeleton squad that just wasn't the same same team. And COVID, well, because, obviously, because I mean the, the the I mean it was Madden's dad. It was Madden's dad was the backer, and once like once his son got into pro, I'm I'm sure that that kind of caused something. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, kid, it, the kid, the, 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 the I felt like the team or Aliso was fu- funded, or you know I don't know the, the complete logistics, but you no know, me on the outside looking in, if I'm if if the team is for my kid, and then my kid makes it to the pro. What do I, what do I need the rest of you? What do I, what am I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm it, going, I'm go I'm, I'm, I'm going with my kid to pro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you said it perfect. And, uh, Brett contributed a lot. He, um, was really played a really good managerial role. Um, I'm sure you, as everyone knows, there's so much to do in paintball that involves just like doing hotels and like stupid stuff, not even like drawing up plays. We're just off the field stuff. He handled that. Just getting there I, is a, is a, is a yeah. nine to five job. Yeah, yeah. And it, you don't realize like, you know, it's like herding cats. It's horrible. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's rough. And now these, uh, you know, we had a really successful growth over the year. Um, I wouldn't say it was like a successful year, but like where we started from, from, day one and like being like what's your name to where we ended up it was really great and uh unfortunately uh revo was looking at taking some players and i think what really kind of screwed it up was we found out as we were celebrating cup so it was kind of like all right woohoo seventh place let's have some beers some here's the girls at the whatever truck by all the tvs and we're just having a good time uh, you know I have like an Instagram story of how much fun we're having. And then it just cuts to like a, a kitchen on fire. <laughs> you know, <and> it's like <laughs> how, you know, paintball went last year. And it was kind of like uh, a punch in the face being like, we just got this rolling. Like this was just clicking. Like it yeah. takes a year and it got gutted. Um, Jake went up. Jake's a great player. He quarterbacks really well. Uh, B pro uh, was going to be taken up and Chris Shearer was going to be taken up, but um, I don't really know what exactly happened there, but he ended up going playing pro for NRG and uh, down where he where he lives, Virginia area. I'm not quite too sure, but he's uh, ch- chimed in on all the uh, webcasts <laughs> and stuff like that. So shout out to him. But uh, he, no, go ahead. Uh, he's he's well because he's originally from like up here, right? Didn't he play on t- t- Top he Gun with- Trenton or? Yeah, so he was friends with Alvin. So Alvin Johnson was playing with us, and I, I, he had like a whole bunch of outreach to everybody. And Chicken ended up playing with us a little bit too. So we, 
uh, yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that's how the connection was made, but Black Pat knows everybody. I mean, like, mm-hmm. everybody. <laughs> so I'm yeah. probably just known as Black Pat's friend until now. <laughs> but, it's uh, Black yeah. Pat and that other guy. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, it just kind of sucked, and uh, being on the outside of that situation, it really upset me. And I know Red was very upset, and it, it was just kind of like one of those, like, we just got this going, and it just it kind of just kind of deflated the tires. Uh, we picked up uh, another player, Colin McGuire, um, who's out of control. Good. Uh, he just <laughs> has, he had to been just doing drills for like three years and just gunfights everybody and makes them look stupid. So I know he'll listen to this later. <laughs> Lego head. He'll, he'll uh, he's pretty good. So um, yeah, we picked him up and he came with us and really impressed everybody. But uh, yeah. And then kind of COVID happened and, Going into the first event for Northeast teams, I feel like the snow and the weather just doesn't help at all. Um, It does not. I I see like Texas teams, like, or even during the pandemic, right? I'm sitting here and I live in South Philly, like right by the stadium. So it's like the city shut down, we're in lockdown, and I go on Instagram and it's like Texas teams grinding. And I'm like, well, how are we going to compete? when these guys are grinding in nice weather and I guess the weather was nice here too at the time, but it's just like, we're closed. So it's just another thing where the Northeast just just don't care, bro. No, there's just no rules. Everyone's moving. They don't care. (laughs) They're like, Oh sick. We got that. that, We got our stimulus check. Let's go down to paintball fit and let's buy a fucking four K set. (laughs) That's how they got all those skids. Stimulus checks. (laughs) Guys, that's what I'm saying. Figured it out. You know what I mean? You're you're probably correct. I mean, and GI's Texas like, damn, is we can't sell the paint to anybody but you guys, so we'll even give you a better deal because the hub yeah, is yeah. right there. You know, there might be something to that because, I mean, paintball fields I had thought would be like hurting really bad. You can't do all this stuff. Um, you know, well, not hurting really bad, but for those listening in, maybe not in the Northeast. You know, paintball fields in the Northeast make their money in the summer, from my understanding. I don't own a field, but. They make their money in the summer. And if the summer is flat, I remember talking to Brian Barno a few years ago. He's like, it's rained every weekend. And it's just it just hurts their business because people mm-hmm. just aren't coming out. And you don't have the other half of the year that's nice weather to, to earn that money back. No, you're right. The one I mean, I, I can... worked at a few. No, sorry. Well, the, the, I was going to say the one thing I can say is Field. we're talking to the soup can guy yesterday. And I know yeah. at Cousins, we, you know, they're busy. Like I right. had to help out at my local field the other day and they had every rent. They had 150 rental guns and they had every rental gun out at one point. Yeah. I, I heard that also. Um, was it at long live that Jim, uh, Jim Kim just had like the best day of business of all time. Like he was like opening gun boxes or something. I don't know if I'm thinking of confusing the fields or people, but paintball no, fields. I think just Waldo been- was there. If he's not in the, in glitch land, he can speak about it. Cause we were actually talking about it. I think a couple days ago, he was saying he was there and he was like, dude, it's the busiest I've ever fucking seen it. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, from my understanding, that's great, but I, I didn't realize it'd be like that, but maybe people and I, people being walk-ons being like, Hey, we can go play paintball. And that's like socially distancing. Technically you just kind of stage, you know, six feet apart or, or whatever, uh, fields are doing you know and just sanitizing the masks and guns and stuff like but which they are doing anyways typically so now they're doing it even better and uh if they're gaining success and having popular weekends that's good because i was concerned for a while that fields would just be disappearing me too no i was super that's why i wanted to talk to like the field like manager about it because i want i was like you are you guys hurting bad he's like dude yeah like we were closed whatever two months or whatever he's like but dude, honestly, since it's been open, I guess he's saying because there's not a lot of things to do. He's like, Your birthday yeah. parties have been crazy. He's like, I got them all the week, all, like seven or eight every every day. Yeah, that's crazy because like, I don't know. Uh, I was thinking, sorry, my hair is in my eyes now. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like birthday parties and stuff. I was thinking it'd be crazy, but uh, in the city, everything's closed. Like you can't go out and do stuff. And especially now it's colder. You don't want to like sit outside for dinner. So maybe people are like, let's just go do something. And even if it's like a bunch of guys who are usually down tailgating the Eagles game, they can't do that. So it's like, Hey, what are we going to do? Let's go shoot each other with paintball guns. So maybe it's just kind of like the list of things exactly. that you go through, but you know, beers, tailgating bars, whatever clubbing, and then paintball. So, and, or you're too hungover 
to go paintballing the next day, you know, like maybe that's like the issue. Like everyone goes out Dude, drinking go the and then they're going to play the next day. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to do. Well, not nothing to do, but there's a lot less to do. So maybe that's limited. Definitely yeah, limited. good for paintball. Apparently it is. That's what I've been. That's what I've been hearing. Like what field do you play out locally in Philadelphia? Well, the good thing about Philly right now, it feels like I'm in reach of everything. I'm in reach of long live. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in reach of Top Gun. Uh, basically everything in Jersey down to OXCC in Delaware, Maryland. So, and that's all within an hour, hour and a half to, to all those fields, uh, including, uh, hat, the Hatfield field, uh, that, um, I, I like grew up like right near there. I grew up in Doylestown in Bucks County. So that was 30 minutes away. So within Philadelphia, I mean, Philadelphia is 45 minutes away from Philadelphia, but it's, it's nice that if you can get on a highway, you can kind of get around, but, uh, right. Right now, I have a good little bubble of fields to jump to. Oh, that's nice. We're not that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been playing at? So we live on Long Island. So we'll either, if we're trying to, like, depends on what we're trying to do. If we're going to run points, we'll head up to Long Live and deal with the George W. But if we're going to do just, like, drills and, and, you know, situational stuff, we'll head out to Cousins. Yeah. How far of a drive is it, uh, like, time-wise for both of those fields? Well, I live, I mean, 30 minutes from Cousins because once you're on Long Island, you're on Long Island. And uh, Long lives about two. It's not too bad. Yeah, and $15 one way, right? Yeah. What's, what's the toll on the bridge? <laughs> I don't know. I don't look at it. I just pay. Don't the, look. Yeah. yeah I just That's pay the stupid pay whatever the toll at the end of the month. Yeah. But so yeah, it de it depends. But that's what it. It's really not going there too long. Live that's fine or anywhere else. It's the coming home. Mm, the traffic that's, the Sunday. This, yeah. Sunday night be, traffic that screws you, or is it? Yeah, and it could be like a two-hour drive home, or it could be an eight. Who knows? Yeah, that's scary. I know. Um, coming back from OXCC, uh, Delaware, Maryland area, up to Philadelphia, I, and I haven't lived in Philly for long, but I'm from the area, so you still gotta go through Philly and mm -hmm. uh you know on Sundays we kind of would assume like beach traffic or just yeah. something else that bottlenecks from Jersey or Atlantic City expressway or something and, and you end up hitting traffic on the way home often Sundays um I know when Straza oh and another field within reach is uh Straza's field that's not too far um but uh when we would go up there to like the Meadowlands and stuff, like Sunday mm -hmm. football, like that was about the time when I was with the Jesters too. And it was just like the drive isn't bad. It's the traffic and Sunday football traffic that destroyed us. And it was like I mean, one, it's unsafe. I always say, like, you don't want to do anything tired and you don't want to drive tired. And when you're frustrated, can't get home and tired, you don't want to obviously get into an accident. So I try and limit my paintball drives without going too far uh at least with a friend you know making sure someone's in the car with me for you know under three hours one way and uh we've taken rides out to pap to do their mega practices before and that's a haul that's three hours so if you're trying to start at eight you know you're, <laughs> you're leaving at five so we've gotten hotels or piggyback to closer friends you know their floors and then right. launched in the morning but still a long drive it really uh it's really become a travel sport. It's really uh, demanding. No, it really is. Like, no, no matter how you slice it, you're going to be driving, especially if you're trying to be competitive, because you're no matter what, you're going to want to drive to where the good teams are. Mm -hmm. no matter yeah, how and it feels it. it feels like right now there's a good pull of teams in our area uh, within like the D3 level, D4 level, and uh, some D2 level teams too. But I think. Uh, it's hard to see where everything is at now with COVID like this whole year. It feels like I didn't uh, get a good feel of where teams are, what's happening. And there's just some people who lost their jobs and it's like, I can't play ball right now. So it's just kind of crazy. And you're, or, you know, it's like, Hey, I live with my grandma. I can't, I can't bring this home kind of stuff. And that's, that's super scary. Yeah, no, I know. I know a couple of dudes that were like that where, yeah, they live with their parents who like had kids later. So they were older. So yeah, they were like not about going out. Yeah, I've tried to be super conscious about doing stuff in the city or even whatever it is, then running into my parents or it's like a hello from a distance because I'm in the area. But uh, but yeah, it's it's been hard to do it for this long, for sure. And paintball has like stopped. And this is kind of a, a good little segue. You know, everyone's been watching repeats of these one on ones that NXL has been putting on and all these other webcasts. And there hasn't been any webcasts this year. I, 
there hasn't been anything until <laughs> shout out Tom Paintball. And, uh, Tom yeah. Paintball. Shout out Tom Paintball. <laughs> Bob. Shout out Maggie K. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so it's really refreshing, I think, to see uh, some people that I know just I've seen online jump in and watch it or share little clips of friends and just chirping each other back and forth or even, you know, saying hi to me or good job about it um, from all over the place. And it's definitely reached some uh, some new players, uh, some up and coming pro players, and they've all just reached out and said, hey, good job and really happy with what I did. And I think the TSXL, um, FTP and Comp Paintball have really jumped on a market here that was untapped due to COVID and NXL's um, pause. I, I don't know the right word with COVID, but it's like, uh, there, if you're not playing, I mean, like if I wasn't doing anything on Sunday and I was like, Oh, there's a live tournament. I'm going to put that on TV. Like it, it yeah. that's how we got a bunch of viewers and more stuff. So it's really cool to, uh, to be able to jump on that market. And it seems like, uh, everyone has, uh, given me positive feedback so far on my commentating job and, uh, the events. I've only heard good things about TSXL. I've only heard good things about the event in FTP at, uh, Gear Up Paintball, which is a brand new field. It's another brand new field in uh, Jersey. And uh, shout out to Miles over there. He said that they're having success. And because I was like, "Hey, awesome. man, new field. Like, how's how's it going?" You know, like, yeah. right. like it's a, hey, it's a like, hell of a time to open up, pal. Yeah, I know, man. Like, how's it going? And he was like, "No, man. Like, it's going good. There's there's people here, and I, maybe he's tapping a really good market. But uh, I, I just maybe assume COVID and paintball wouldn't mix, but apparently it is. So." no like kind of going back to what we were talking before it was like i would thought like you i'm like yo our field's fucked i'm like our field's closing our field's closing yeah. we're not gonna have yeah. a paintball field on long island anymore but it seems like i had no whatever... problem with that <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like for whatever reason they withstood it and the ones that are still open are just absolutely crushing it and are fill every weekend it's awesome to see yeah and uh you know it's good that these events have gotten in now because we're about to hit the cold weather and gear up had a successful event long live and tsxl had a successful event so you know i'm looking forward to next season and uh hopefully i'll come back as a commentator and uh mm. continue doing it i've only everyone's made the same reference to me and it's pretty funny you know it's like the best commentators in paintball have the name maddie you know it's like watch out maddie marshall and i'm like all right, right i'm not trying to take anyone's job yet right no but uh it's <laughs> i guess the the sky's the limit so um it's just kind of funny too. I was uh, telling myself, you know, I need a, a little bit of like a, a side thing. I need something to do. And it's like with COVID, everything just kind of stopped. And, you know, I, I can't really play these, these division four tournaments. So it's like, I can't even play locals. And uh, this is an opera, awesome opportunity. And thank you for bringing me on to, uh, to do this and just have some fun and talk paintball all day. Oh, dude, no problem. No problem. And I'm like, I'm kind of curious to know, like, so how did he approach you about the commentary? Because I'm super interested in it because I love it. I think the stream is great. He approached me, it. man. He approached me with a resume. Oh, Wait. so that's how it came about. Because I'm really interested. I want to do it, too. <laughs> I would love to get in the booth to do commentating because I'm a huge sports uh, guy. And I feel like dude, there's not enough paintball on TV, on like three, the Internet. I, I got three killer, three killer commentary, dude. So if, if they need to go pee real quick, man, maybe I'll let you jump in. Got, <laughs> like I got that. Maddie. I got Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank's Maddie's probably a better commentator than Frank, but Frank Frank's got the reach. He's he'll get ya ya on the phone and <laughs> yeah, he will. He will he'll share it up. Yeah, he'll, he'll boost those numbers good. He's a little bit better of a booster. Not saying I didn't think Maddie and Allie did a good job, you know, trying to get the numbers, but I think Frank's got well, he's got some reach, home, man. Yeah, well, Frank's and his Frank's dudes are home or something. You know what I mean? They're sitting on the couch. On a yeah, Sunday and while maybe some of the younger people were probably working. Yeah, it, definitely. Uh, and, it, and it's funny though too. I mean, I was trying to do the the share the links on my phone and and even mm -hmm. just look at like little texts coming in as I'm doing it. But looking at the screens that Bob has set up from Comp Paintball, looking at the chats coming through, watching the games, commentating, like social media wow. has to be like premeditated. Like that's yeah, what I'm yeah, realizing. Yeah. Something I want to do better is like almost prepare posts or like start getting stuff ready to share as I'm doing it and push it along. Because if I have to stop what I'm doing to like make, to share the links and, and talk with people, like I almost want to just save it right to my notes and just start pushing it out that way because uh, it's hard to do three things at once. And uh, 
it's a learning curve and we're getting better event by event. So it's, it's definitely exciting. And, uh, yeah, I, I originally uh, broadcasted or webcasted, I guess, uh, APL uh, with Alex Hamilton uh, when we were Philly Energy. And uh, that was a fun event. That was like our warm up to the season. We flew out to California and played this, I don't know what it was kind of event. It was like a one off of it. No, I think they had more, but we only played one. Um, and uh, we came out there with the Philly Energy guys. It was like Mike Mesa, me, Andy, Alex Hamilton, Ian, and. Uh, a couple other guys, I'm sure. I, I can't remember who all was there, but it wasn't it wasn't like ten people. And uh, we played against like Dynasty and Houston Heat. And I recently shared that picture because I was just like, "Wow, full circle." Last time I commentated, and now I'm commentating again. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, really fun to like jump on the mic up there and just talk paintball. And uh, it, it was kind of funny when I had seen this come up. I was thinking like. Who else can say that they've done that? Like, I don't really know too many people can say that they've commentated on high level games and played high level paintball. So I kind of saw an opportunity to jump on it when I really was like, Hey, I'm looking for something fun to do. I know the game. I can do this. And, uh, I, I shot out my resume basically. And, uh, said, this is kind of what I've done in paintball. This is what I can do. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking to just expand it even more. No, dude, it's sick. So, like what, what, do you, what are your paintball plans for like next season? Cause this season's pretty much over. I don't know if you plan on playing world cup. So that's why I'm just trying to get into what, what the future holds for you. So world cup, um, I made a conscious decision a couple of months ago just to say, Hey, maybe don't get on a plane. Uh, if there was ever a year to focus on real life and get an yeah, Airbnb a and go on vacation, you know, uh, this is the year. You know, so I'm I'm holding uh, myself to my word and just really enjoying life uh, to the well, <laughs> 2020 yeah. life, right? And uh, right, uh, having a good time with my girlfriend, and we've been uh, traveling around, doing some stuff, and hanging out. Uh, so I've been saying no to paintball more often than not. Um, first time in my life, <laughs> yeah. I always like you know it's like family reunions, you know, important whatever is going on. It's like no paintball first. So it's like really good opportunity to make sure I can uh, focus on real life and uh mm -hmm. not playing cup but in the future um i think i think it's safe to say that uh now that Rikers raiders have played an event um they're gonna be looking to continue playing some locals and expand their team uh, i was literally talking uh with quinn and uh pat about this today about like what we were trying to do and we're probably gonna end up setting up a zoom call eventually about <laughs> everyone's ranking what we want to do, what we want to play because I want to play, but I can't play D4 D TSXLs and I can't play this. I mean, Pat slipped well, in. So how low are you, your D2 though, dude? How low are your D2 points? Probably about the same as Pat. Cause I mean, we play all the same events. You, so. so then you just, Pat, I mean, Pat hurt himself. So maybe Pat should have been in the booth. I mean, uh, nah, because uh, you never know. know. There could be a switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you're bringing up exactly the conversation that we had today. And uh, I talked to Pat and his uh, his knees hurting him. He's got he's definitely got a long road uh, ahead of him to get it better. So, uh, you know, he doesn't want to make it worse. So I've been trying to help motivate him to uh, get better and trying to make him crack a smile about it. Because I know it's one of those things like I want to. Like, all right, so if I'm playing a team that I hate, I want to beat them. Like, I just want to straight up uh, beat them in paintball. I don't want to see anyone get hurt. I don't want to beat them on a bad call. I want to confidently, no asterisk, beat them. And, you know, Pat's injury is is something that's been lingering for him, and I just want him to get better and not hurt it worse and be like, paintball will be here. Come back and and do well. Um Raiders did very, very, very well. And anyone who was saying Pat was trying to sandbag it, I'll get into that in a second. But, <laughs> uh, dude, the rankings allow. Exactly. The rankings dude, are allowed. Way worse. Way worse <laughs> things go on. Yeah. Yeah. And way worse. I've, I've, I've seen, seen way, a lot worse of way worse things go on, Pample. And, uh, you know, the Raiders squad, uh, squad that we kind of put together, they put together, um, carried that on their own. Pat literally played one point. So no one can say anything about that ranking issue. The Raiders put that on their back. Cody Miak, Quinn, all those guys, uh, they really, they really did well. They came out with third place, got some cash and had some fun. Um, I think next year are going to look to expand into that and see who has interest. Uh, I don't know what's on the national, uh, 
menu for next year yet. You never know. COVID could be getting worse, apparently. I I don't know. Yeah. And now uh who knows so, about that. So if we're looking to play more local, you know, we're looking to see if we can put together the best players with a calculator. And it's, you know, <laughs> Pat Pat literally puts a Facebook post of who wants to play D four and people are like, Oh, I'll play. He's like, No, you're too high. No, you're too high. And he's like I mean, he's like literally scheming this stuff and he's really clever with it. So I could see Raiders putting together a team and uh, me included to try and contribute to that. Um, and we'll see. I know a lot of those guys want to keep playing and possible tryouts uh, in the future. But, uh, you know, we have we have a lot of people in mind and uh, a lot of old people off the radar uh, that want to come out and play and have some fun who have unranked themselves. So mm-hmm. let's uh, we'll see what's in the future, but nothing set in stone yet. But uh Raiders are going to be around to keep playing 10 man and uh, locals for what it's worth. No, hell yeah, dude. Awesome. Uh, Walter, you got any more questions for him? Um, no, man. I mean, I know Pat's working the calculator or anything like that. Um, you know, we're, we're working out our deal with Tom Pample. We're looking at Maddie back on the, on the stream, you know, uh, same with Frank, same <laughs> with Allie, you know, we're, we're, we're crunching the numbers, but we're, you could definitely count, you know, Tom Pample, um, Ali, Frank, they're all going to be back, you know, for TSXL, all five awesome. events. We'll, we'll get the dates out. Uh, you know, we can make that, you know, announcement for sure that we're going to have comp people um, with the official press release and everything like that. But, uh, you know, we're working on that. And, uh, you know, man, Maddie, thanks for coming on. If you want to plug yeah. any of your sponsors or, you know, sure. plug all your boys or anything like that. And if you forget anybody, we'll just have to have you on again. Yeah, I mean, uh, shout out to all the Raiders, basically. All my friends, long-term, paintball, there's too many to name, too many sponsors, all the fields. <laughs> I mean, like, everyone, Big Jim over at Top Gun, uh, Brian and Mike down at OXCC, uh, Jim up at Long Live. Every, I mean, all the fields that have always given me the opportunity to play and have fun. And, uh, you know, it, I think it goes a long way just for, like, a lot of the younger players, too. You know, uh, I like to try and carry a reputation, like, on and off the field to try and be good with the fields and – you know, try and help them out as much as possible. You know, a lot of players come in asking, you know, oh, hey, I want to get a sponsorship. And it's like, well, what can you do for the field? And you really have to take a step back and remember, you know, you, it's a business and you got to try and uh, help them out too. So it's the little stuff that you can do for them. And uh, just shout out to everybody who's helped me along the way. I mean, I've been sponsored by every paintball company. <laughs> you know, every, every, like, you know, there's just too much from start to finish. And, you know, special shout out to Biggie and, uh, Misfit Toys for doing well at the FTP tournament and everyone else. I was else surprised, man. I was surprised how well, man. They did really well. They had a swing point go their I way. Mean, and yeah, and Charles on their squad was looking really good. Uh, Dan Bainbridge. And they were, Misfit Toys was one of the only teams that tripled up the back center. And that was fun to watch. And they were filling out. And uh, <laughs> if you go back and watch the commentary, I was, I was calling it pretty well where, you know, Misfit Toys were a little bit slower rolling behind their guns and uh, they're playing these little bit more faster teams, but less experienced. And Mr. Toys were able to just uh, play their style of paintball and do the thing that Big E drilled into my head. It's like attack as a team up the field and uh, having the perspective I did, I, I saw it drawn out perfectly and uh, Big E does a really good job with his guys. Absolutely, man. And I think it was, you know, just kind of thinking about that too. I mean, do you think that the difference between like my matches were 12 minutes? Do you think, I think the 10 minute match helped them. Like I think because they were so close that towards the end, I think that two minutes allowed them to kind of slow down the match where those matches were a lot closer than maybe they could have been if it was a 12 minute match. I mean, what what do you think on that? This is just something that was kind of, I was thinking about like looking at scores, not just the misfit toys, but they were kind of like one of the examples that I was kind of thinking of when I was watching it. And I was watching on an off all day. Um, hmm. Well, I think the first thing it comes down to is the layout. Um, if you have a defensive layout or a layout that's going to promote snake off the break and some other crazy things, I think that's going to just affect it so much more. Um, Misfit Toys doing a defensive breakout and uh, Savages doing a defensive breakout all day. Um with less time that uh, if you get up a point and you can, and you have a really good pocket defensive play and all you have to do is defend for less time, then I would say, yeah, the, the defensive teams are going to benefit from the shorter games and yeah, uh, wait it out. Yeah. And they just kind of set traps and 
uh, play the pocket. Shout out to all the savages and all those guys that played really well and took that home. Those guys did really well at TSXL and, and showed up and Solus and Matt Dunn. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah uh, they they played their game. They looked mm-hmm. very solid. And uh, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin running out to the snake corner every point. I'm trying to tell these guys, like, I'm commenting, commentating on these games and I'm like, I shouldn't be saying this because these are my friends, but I'm like, I can guess where Kevin's going to go. And before I'm done saying it, he's sprinting to the corner. So I'm like, uh, you know, Savage has done really well. I, I can't take anything away from him. Uh, but to answer your question, I think the, the shorter game time did help teams like Mr. Toys and uh, Savages with a defensive game plan. All right, guys. So we had Matt. Eddie. You will definitely have him for, you know, maybe we'll do a, a press release with him and Comp Paintball, you know, 2021 yeah. coming into the season. We'll have to set up something. But, uh, you know, again, everybody visit our Patreon down below. Patreon slash Overshot, a paintball podcast. Visit Dizana. <laughs> visit every boo. We gave the finger. Visit Dizana for the boys. Visit Volcano. Overshot for Dizana. And Overshot 10 for Volcano. And uh, peace out, guys. We'll see you out there and check out. Uh, Comp Paintball, Chetty, listen to the reruns of TSXL and for the players. And uh, you'll be listening to them soon on uh, some more Comp Paintball webcasts. Oh, subscribe rate and review. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks, for coming. Thanks for coming on again, Maddie. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Happy whenever.